One of my favorite sites for getting uh, lifestyle information as it pertains to health and supplements and so on is the MedCram website, which you can see here. They basically started life as uh, a service provider to sell their products for education to medical students and staff. And uh, I do like the way that they constantly feature peer-reviewed studies that are not preprints and um, go through them and present the results. So I basically started noticing uh, over the years that I've been watching them that uh, Roger Scheholt, uh sorry for uh, wrecking the name there, but he often alludes to the importance of uh, different types of light as therapy. And I highly recommend if you do a, a Google search on uh, infra or red light therapy and Raynaud's, um, the results that come up are pretty old and dated and that's where the previous playlist that I mentioned from MedCram can put a more modern perspective on to this subject. Look for example here, let's go through a few that had popped up that I tried to get some information from. What I wanted to do when looking at these was see if I could find an appropriate wavelength for um, potentially applying red light therapy to the hands and the digits. And all these studies that came up basically came from an era where all the red light therapy was using lasers, which really focuses on a pinpoint level, which would be pretty good for um, therapies that involve uh, an area under your kneecap or for a precise target, but not so good for treating a broader area such as your hand. And um, indeed, let's look at the dates on some of these and we can see why uh, the LEDs, which are a uh, wider focus area, um, were not mentioned in these studies because they're so old, like this one here, 21 years ago. Um, another one, 19 years ago from the date that I'm here now. And um, so on, uh, another one from 2004. And then as they get a little uh, newer, 2012 and um, here we go 2017 and this was about the latest that I could find when I was going through some of this in terms of um, looking at specifically with Raynaud's in the uh, title of these uh, PubMed reviews. Now one of the problems you'll see reflected even in uh, the studies as they continue to come out is they tend to focus their study based upon uh, a wavelength or a particular wavelength. And indeed, as more studies come out, as you'll see on MedCram, um, they haven't decided yet which wavelengths are are particularly most effective for any given thing that they're studying. And so then the question for the consumer becomes, well, what length, wavelength would I be using in order to um, uh, do this at home? And um, you'll see here that you can go through a lot of these studies. And um, I guess one of the more important takeaways would be to determine that what wavelength it is that you're interested in because um, our bodies are made up of a stratified as you know there's substrates of uh, where all your different uh, concerns fall into place and so what we are going to be looking at in this particular case is where uh, the venous blood flow takes place which is in the subcutaneous layer and what wavelength actually gets to that layer and what we see here is that we are looking at wavelengths that are 700 nanometers or above and therefore 
a heat lamp is not going to be particularly effective there. And when it comes to consumer grade LEDs that are readily available and affordable, those tend to fall into when they're up, when we want to get above 700. Then we're looking at 850 as the most ubiquitous because those are commonly used in security uh, cameras that you mount outside in your CCTV cameras for seeing in the dark. That they commonly use 850. Some will use 940. And also 810 nanometers uh, are also available in various devices. Uh, most probably uh, common would be in uh, the lights that hunters mount on their firearms for uh, seeing wildlife at night. Now one of the things that caught my attention when I was going through some of these PubMed uh, studies was this line here where um, oxidative stress is mentioned in the same paragraph as vasculopathy and why that caught my attention was uh, and you can see here where they mention that is when you come down here and they do talk about reactive oxygen species and reactive oxygen species is something that is discussed a lot when it comes to discussions of uh, photobiomodulation or red light therapy. So um, down here if you read through this paragraph a little more and you'll see the link up there in the URL. Uh, take a look at this and go there and, and just read up on that and then you can start going down the rabbit hole of how the goods and bads of reactive oxygen species there are also um, publications, of course, with respect to Raynaud's that discuss uh, possible pharmacological studies that have addressed this, as well as uh, more natural supplements. And the one that attracted my attention, so I kept it up here, was this one on NAC. Now, um, that's 2014. So in 2001, they uh, looked at NAC by uh, giving it... Um, I think intravenously if I remember correctly on this one and this pilot study seemed to uh, indicate that it was worthy of further study and then what I believe happened was um, somebody went further with that and they did a double blind placebo controlled study which was a clinical trial and the conclusion on that one was that it didn't see a lot of effects. And lastly, um, there was a Reddit post where the uh, poster mentioned that you could get free red light therapy at Planet Fitness. And uh, both Alex Fergus and Andrew Latour also did visit this topic in their YouTube videos. So I would direct you to have a look at those before you uh, run out and uh, either upgrade your Planet Fitness membership to the uh, card or whatever it is that's required to get into this booth um, because I believe that the uh, findings were rather discouraging on that part.